how you doing? This is Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts, and this is a holiday special. Tonight we're going to be talking about Hanukkah, and we're going to find out the origins of it and the reason why it's celebrated. Um, and I do want to put out a disclaimer that some of my punctuation might be off, and there's a lot of research material to get through, so I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. So Hanukkah is actually a zerd for, or Hanukkah takes place for eight nights and eight days, and it starts on the 25th day of Kesva according to the Hebrew calendar. Now, this occurs around the late time frame of November to later December in a Gregorian calendar. This festival is witnessed by lighting of the candles. It is called the menorah, which has eight branches on it. Now, one of those branches is actually typically placed above or below the others. Now, this candle is actually used to light the other candles, and it is a unique candle. In fact, it's called the attendant. So on every single night, an additional candle is lit by the attendant. Now, this happens until all eight candles are lit together on the final night of the festival. Now, naturally, other activities do take place, such as singing of Hanukkah songs and playing of the game of Driddle. Now, as well as eating oil-based uh, foods. So since the 1970s, the worldwide Shabbat Hasidic movement has initiated public menorah lightings in open public places in many countries. Although it is an, originally initiated as a feast, which is not in corresponding obligation. Now, therefore, is considered a minor holiday in strictly religious terms. Now, still yet, saying that, Hanukkah is kept a major cultural significance in the U.S. as well as elsewhere among many Jews due to it occurring around the same time as Christmas during the holiday season. So, the actual story of Hanukkah is preserved in the books of the 1st and 2nd Maccabees, which actually describes in detail the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem and the lighting of the menorah. Now, keep in mind that the books are not part of the Canaanized Masoretic text version of the Jewish Bible that is used and accepted by the rabbis in Judaism. And therefore, modern Jews copied and edited and distributed among different groups known as the Masoretes. Now, between the 7th and 10th centuries of the Common Era, then again, the books of the Maccabees, which included the mid and 3rd century BCE, the Roman Catholic Church, and the Orthodox churches, uh, considered the Maccabee books as canonical parts of the Old Testament. Now, the eighth day rededication of the temple is actually described in the first Maccabees, although the miracle oil does not appear here. There is a story, though, that is similar in character and is actually an older in date. It is the one that is included in the second Maccabees, according to which the relighting of the altar fire by Nemea which is due to a miracle which actually occurred on the 25th day of Kesla. Now, and which appears as the reason for the selection of the same date for the uh, selection of the same date for the rededication of the eight day feast of the booths. Similarly, the second Maccabees explains the length of the feast as a namer of the feast of the booths. Now, the Neglant Lunet, let's, uh, first century, it uh, contains a list of the festive days. These days are ones in which the fa uh, feasting is actually forbidden. On the 25th of Kesvla of Hanukkah of eight days, and is not, is, and is not to, hold on a second, bear with me. Oh, and it's not to last. And then the reference of the story of the rededication of the temple. Sorry about that. 
The Mashna, late second century, mentions the Hanukkah. Several places, but it never describes in law in detail as well as never mentions an aspect of the history behind it. To explain the Misha, lack of systematic discussion of Hanukkah, Rabbi Nisha Goen populated that the information of the holiday was so commonplace that the Mishva felt no need to actually explain it. The miracle of the one day supply of the oil lasting eight days is actually described in the Telamon, committed and is written around 600 years after the events described in the book of the Maccabees. The Telamon has, um, at, the Telamon says that after the forces of Antiochus had been driven from the temple, the Maccabees discovered that almost all the ritual oil had been pro profaned. They found only one unopened jar of oil sealed by the high priest, which is enough oil to actually last for one single night. Now, since it actually burned miraculously, actually for eight nights instead, the time it took to have a new oil pressed and ready, so that was the miracle behind it. The fact that there was only one unopened jar that was untainted. And they thought it was only enough oil to last for one night. But instead it actually burned for eight solid nights. Which was the exact time frame that they needed to actually press and make ready for new oil. Which is actually incredible whenever you think about it. But there's much more to learn about it. So, the Talmud actually presents three options now. The law requires only one candle lit each night per household. A better practice is to light one light each night per, uh, is to practice is to light one light each night per household. Now, the most preferred practice is to vary the number of lights each night. Now, except in times of danger, the lights were to be placed outside one's door or on the opposite side of the, um, or the side of the mazua or in the window closest to the street. The purpose is to publicly show the miracle is actually being resembled or being remembered. Sorry about that. The Al or the Al Hindizan pray is recited on Hanukkah as an addition to the Ahmed prayer, which was formalized in the first century. The Jewish historian Titus Flusvin, Josephus Nerestus, in his book Jewish Antiquities, how the uh, victorious Jewish Maccabees ordered the temple in Jerusalem that had been profaned by the Antioch Athenes. Josephus did not say that the festival was to actually be called Hanukkah. He said it was to be called the Festival of Lights. The New Testament, John 10, 22 through 22, actually says, Then came the festival of the dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in a temple, courts, walking in Solomon's colonel. Uh, New IV uh, translation there. So after the death of Alexander, Alexander the Great in 323 BCE, Judea, Judea became part of the Flamen Kingdom in Egypt until around 200 BCE. Now this happened when the king Antiochus III, the great, uh, the great of Syria, defeated the king Ptolemy of Ephesus of Egypt at the Battle of Panium. This made Judea become part of the Salutic Empire of Syria. The new king, Anarch III, wanted to comfort the new Jewish subjects. So he actually granted the right to actually um, live according to the old laws and the old customs. So he allowed them to continue to practice their religion in the temple of Jerusalem. Now this was actually due to make sure that they were happy. A happy and happy people is a productive people in the in the simplest of terms. So however, Antioch of Ephesus the fourth, who was a son of him, 
actually invaded Judea in 175 BCE at the request of Tobias. And important to know that Tobias, who actually led the Helzine Jews uh, factions in Jerusalem, were actually expelled to Sahara, uh, Syria around 170 BCE when his high priest um, Onias and the pro-Egyptian faction gained control from them. So it was exiled Tobias who actually lobbied him to recapture Jerusalem. When the second temple in Jerusalem was actually looted and the services stopped, Judaism was actually completely outlawed. So in 100, uh, 167 BCE, Antiochus had ordered an altar to Zeus be erected in the Jewish temple. He then banned the circumcision as well and ordered pigs to be sacrificed to Zeus at the altar in the temple. And this is blasphemy to the Jewish people and also smacking their, their God in, um, in the face. And at this time, there was a lot of control factions between the Greek and the Jews. And that's the reason why you heard Zeus's statue actually being erected in there. So these actions actually provoked a huge, large-scale revolt, naturally. So it was Matthias, a Jewish priest, and his five sons that held a rebellion against Antiochus. Now it started with Matthias the first killing a Jew who wanted to comply with Antiochus, who ordered a sacrifice to Zeus. Who, yeah, who wanted to comply with them. So, then a Greek official who was to enforce government rules. So you got to understand that he only killed these people because of the principle of it. One was a loyal to the ruler and wanted to continue the sacrifice to Zeus, which again is blasphemy in their eyes, in their religion, and it should be. And it's, it's blasphemy in my, in my faith as well. So as well as a Greek official because they were the ones who were controlling it. But anyways, we're going to go a little bit farther with it. So Malachi 2, 24 through 25. Judah became known as um, Yehuda Hamakara, or Jewish the Hammer. So by the year of 166 BCE, Matthias had died and Judah took his place as leader. Now the temple was liberated as well as redirected. Now the festival of Hanukkah was then instituted to, ce uh, to celebrate this actual event. Judah ordered the temple to be uh, cleansed and a new altar be built in place at the, at the polluted one, as well as new holy vessels were actually made. The 12th century scholar, Beminus, known for um, correcting certain areas of Aristo areas by reference to the Hebrew Bible, he, sus he actually introduced, or wait, hold on a second. He, yeah, he introduced um, Aristotelism to both Jews and Christian scholars and described Hanukkah. Thus, in Mishman Torah, the authoritative 14th volume compendium of Jewish law. Now, what began to many redirections of the Civil War actually escalated when Hellenic Kingdom of Syria sided with the Hellenic Jews in a conflict with traditional uh, traditionalist Jews. As the conflict increased, Antiochus sided with the um, Helsingers by outlawing all religious practicing and tra uh, traditions that they rallied actually around. This was an attack against his own people, the Jews as well. So this could explain why the king and total departure from Seleucid practice in all other uh, places and times banned to traditional religion. The miracle oil that is largely regarded as the legend in Alphysony has been questioned since the Middle Ages. However, the belief in the miracle has been accepted by most Orthodox Jews, as well as Shonkun Arak in the main code of Jewish law. The menorah first began to be used as a symbol of Judaism in the Hasmonean 
period, on the currency issued by the Hasman king. Now, Matthias Antonius, between the 40 and 37 BCE, indicating that the tradition of the oil miracle was known then. <clears throat> Hold on one second. Let me get a drink. Again, this is a lot of research material to get through. And again, I do apologize about some of my punctuation. But as I always say, at least I do try. But we're going to continue on. <clears throat> so Hanukkah is actually celebrated with a series of rituals that is performed every day throughout the eight-day holiday. Some are fi our family base and others are actually communal. Then our special ambitions to the daily prayer service and blessings at their meals were actually added. Hanukkah is not a Sabbath like holiday and there is no actually obligation to refrain from activities that are forbidden by the Sabbaths as specified in Sholank Arak or Jewish law. People to work however usually many leave early in order to actually be home to kindle the lights at nightfall. There is no actual holiday schools are to be closed though. Although in Israel, many schools actually do close from the second day of Hanukkah as well as and to the rest of the week. Like I said, there's a lot to get through and I'm doing my best with the punctuation, okay? Though many families were actually exchanged gifts um, each nightfall, some, such as books or games, and Hanukkah guilt is actually often given to children. So fried foods such as potato pancakes, jelly donuts, are actually eaten to in the remembrance of oil during the celebration of Hanukkah. Some people also eat dairy products to remember Judith and how she overcame um, Holofernes by feeding cheese, which made him thirsty and giving him wine to drink. When Holofernes became very drunk, Judith cut off his head. <clears throat> Each night throughout the eight-day holiday, a candle or oil is based, uh, based light and lit. I don't know why I wrote it that way. Um, as a universally practiced beatification of the misfun, the number of lights is actually lit. Eight increase one by night each, or one each night. <clears throat> An extra light called the attendant is also lit each night and is given a distinct location, usually higher or lower to the side of the others. The tendency is for every male member of the household, many family girls as well, to light a full set of lights each night. The purpose of the shamash is to adore the pro, uh, prohibition specified in the Tamang against using the Hanukkah lights for anything other than <coughs> publicizing and meditation of the Hanukkah miracle. This is different from Sabbath candles, which are meant to be used for the lighting of illumination. So all together, including the Shamas, two lights are actually lit on the first night, three on the second, and on and on, ending with nine in total of 44, 36, including the Shamash. The lights can be candles or oil lamps. Electric lights are sometimes used where places are not acceptable and with open flames, you know, such as hospitals or senior homes or uh, veterans and such as that. Most families actually do have a special menorah, and it normally has been placed down from, you know, like family member to family member. So the reason for Hanukkah lights is not actually for lighting of the house, but it is rather to lighting of the homes without so that people can walk by and should see it and be actually remember the miracle of the oil. Now, lamps are to be set outside or set on the window or near the door nearing the street. 
only when in times of danger of anti-Semitic uh, persecution where lamps are supposed to be hidden from public view. This was in the certain cases in Persia under the rule of Zonosurans or parts of Europe before and during World War II. So, according to tradition, the lamps are placed opposite side from the uh, mazus. So, when one passes through the door, he or she is surrounded by the holiness of Mizvah, the commandments. In general, women are exempt by Jewish law from time banned uh, positive commandments, although the Jewish law requires that women engage in lighting of the Hanukkah candles for they too were involved in the miracle. Hanukkah lights should actually be born or burned for at least 30 minutes after it gets dark. The custom is actually to light them after sundown, although some uh, actually do light them much later. So typically, two blessings are recited during this eight-day festival when the lighting of candles. So the first night, the Shinnok blessing is added, making a total of three blessings. The blessings are said before or after the candles are lit, depending on actually the tradition. So the first night of Hanukkah is uh, the first the first light is lit on the right side of the menorah. The second night is placed to the left the to the left of the first but is lit first and so on and so on by placing candles right to the left but lighting them from the left to the right over eight nights so <clears throat> i just wanted to throw that out there real quick i thought hanukkah would be of course naturally part of the holiday special and again i wanted to uh I know some of my punctuation was way off on that. I do have many friends of mine that are in Israel as well as in other countries that are Jewish. So I just want to throw, out, throw it out there. At least I did try, guys, on it. So, But anyways, Hanukkah is much more than just lighting of candles and spreading joy like so many people think. There's actually a big significance. There was warfare involved in it, and there was a miracle involved in it that can only be described as God. So, now we know the actual meaning behind Hanukkah and the reason why it's actually celebrated is much more than what people think. And again, uh, a special significance of the fact that they're not to, they're supposed to place it in the window or the door outside. And you're only supposed to hide it from public view in times of persecution and anti-Semitism. That's also important to know. But so many people do not know the actual traditions of the um, holidays and the reason why we actually celebrate them. Myself, I did not know the full history of Hanukkah. I didn't know about all the struggles behind it and with the oil until I actually did the research to do it. I had a, I had a pretty broad scope of it, but I didn't know the depth of it until I actually did that research. So I'm hoping that's what that's what you guys will gain um, from this short little episode. It was actually much shorter than what I thought it would be. Um, <clears throat> so I hope there was enough information in it. Um, but again, happy holidays to everybody. And it, um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to enjoy, um, include some bonus features as well. Again, everybody, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy Hanukkah to those of you that are Jewish, that are watching, or will be listening later on. Again, Merry Christmas, and everybody have peace, love, and good vibes, and everybody have a great night. This has been Mike. I'm out.